Hey yo, what is going on guys? Dominator here. I'm a Jojo Bo on for a special reason. We just got back from um, Angry Birds the Movie 2 and this is my official movie review for that movie. Let me get situated here guys. I'm sorry. This is really not going way I planned it. Really copper? Um, you get some more lighting on my face. Ooh, there we go. Hi, guys. So, so I get the light sort of fixed. Stay. Okay. There we go. Can I move this? Nope. Okay, that didn't work as well as I wanted it to. But we make the best of it. Anyways, guys. Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. But anyways, uh, review for Angry Birds Movie 2. We've got eight minutes to film this. Let's do it. All right, so um, first thoughts. Interesting. Um, it had had its moments. Uh, JoJo obviously was in it. She played a hatchling named Jay and an eagle and I guess you could say a, a pub. I don't know. They just started singing Baby Shark, and I just started cringing like crazy. But um, just because you know, JoJo and Baby Shark, they don't they don't go together. No, JoJo and High Top Shoes, absolutely. JoJo and any of her songs, absolutely any day. JoJo starts singing Baby Shark as an animated bird. Not really. No. Anyways, uh, aside from that, um, it was Jason Sudeikis. Uh, Bill Hader was in it. Basically, everybody that was in the first one. And there were some references that I caught um, that I do want to uh, expose. Um, so, one of the lines is... Um, so, they find this island, and they, don't, they have no idea what it is. It's called Eagle Island. And they have pictures. And no one's really been to this island, so they have no idea what's going on, what's happening. And Red says, well, how'd you get these pictures? And the pig Leonard, he goes, a drone. And he says, and and uh, Jason Sudeikis goes, do you guys use those drones to spy on us as well? And Leonard goes, yeah. So Jason naturally goes, do you guys watch when I... And Leonard just goes, yes, and it's disgusting. Not really something you want to hear in a kid's movie. Okay. Um, the soundtrack... Also very interesting. Extremely. Um, there are some songs that fit the moment. Not really. But they're, they're there and it somewhat makes sense. Somewhat doesn't. I don't know. You can be the judge of that. Sorry guys, but my throat really dries out uh, quickly because of this cold. So I have my drink and stuff. But um... It, it doesn't really, it's, it has its moments, it's, it's funny, it's, it's good, it's, you know, if you want to go see it, you know, while it's still in theaters, I would highly recommend it, uh, obviously I pulled out all my JoJo merch stock, so I've got the purple bracelet right here, it's got her logo in it, and these never leave my wrist. I also have the white one, and it did come with a pink one when I got it, but I gave that to my girlfriend, so there's that, Then obviously the JoJo bow on my head, this is my favorite one in my collection, this is the uh, Bobo bow, so it's got like little like dog paws and Bobos in the middle, um, so that's kind of cool. Um, as for JoJo herself in the movie phenomenal she really made the best of her character's screen time she didn't get a lot of screen time uh to be honest she didn't get a lot of screen time for her first feature film uh the, the very limited very limited screen time she was limited her actual character that she you know was that she announced she was playing jay only got a total of seven lines but in those seven lines, she made her presence known. She's like, hey guys, I'm here. I can do a voiceover. And, you know, 
those, you know, she made the best of what she had. Um, like I said, she was maybe on screen uh, for maybe 30 seconds at a time. She had, you know, maybe one line to deliver in like 10 scenes. And those seven lines, aside from because she took the lead on Baby Shark, you could tell it was her because she didn't try to, the movie didn't try to hide her voice. They didn't try to do a voiceover of like her doing an accent or something like that. It was completely genuinely her and you could tell. And for the limited screen time that she got, she made her character really pop and not just because I'm a seawinator and because I'm a diehard seawinator. Um, that's not well, the only reason I'm taking JoJo's side. But I have to say that my favorite character in the movie had to be Jay. Just because... It was like JoJo in a genuine form. It was her bringing herself into this character. And it was phenomenal. Um... As for the rest of the guys, obviously, you know, same guys played their same characters. But um, I think for from from a Seawinator standpoint, um, for JoJo's first uh, feature film, and you know, this isn't counting Blurt um, in twenty what is that seventeen on uh, Nick. I'm talking like in theaters. Um, she was phenomenal. She really brought the characters to life in a way that I think if maybe we had, I don't know, maybe like Maddie Ziegler or somebody play those characters, I don't think it would have come out right. Um, I feel that the character she played really was her in this, in this world. Um, you know, she, Jay was, was positive and, and, you know, I think that when you think of JoJo, that that's what you think. Um, you know, I've worn my JoJo bow to school multiple times. Um, I wear my bracelets every day. And I, you know, I don't care what they say. As she says in her song, Boomerang. I don't really care about what they say. I'm going to come back like a boomerang. And that's literally all you have to do, guys. Just don't listen to the haters. Do what you want to do. Be yourself. And just live your best life. And I think that that's kind of what Jay also embodies. So, as we approach 8.15 here uh, in the video, let's get back on to rating and review. Um, I'll give it... I, I'd give it a probably a 4 out of 5 stars. Um... In terms of that, on the Dominator scale, 10 out of 10. Just because of the way JoJo portrayed herself and everybody else. So good job on that. Anyways, guys, as this video ends, I will see you guys.